Everyone keeps calling Pixels the best AI thumbnail generator. And after using it for months, I want to give you my honest take and answer the biggest question you have, whether or not Pixels is actually worth your money. This video will show you all of my favorite features, walk you through everything you need to know to make the buying decision, and you'll see how this tool actually performs live. So you can judge for yourself whether it'll help you generate thumbnails that genuinely boost your channel's CTR. If you want to follow along with me, I have a link for Pixels down in the description. And if you sign up using it, you'll get a seven day free trial to test out everything yourself completely for free. With that being said, let's jump into Pixels. I want to show you the easiest way to create thumbnails in this tool. This is how I come up with the majority of my thumbnail concepts that I actually end up sticking with. That method is the prompt section. I'm going to select the prompt option, paste in my prompt, a split face portrait of a rugged father. The left side of the face is hyper-realistic human flesh showing intense frustration and grit. The right side of the face is carved from cracked white marble, resembling a Roman statue of Marcus Aurelius and symbolizing stoic calm, dark moody background, cinematic lighting, golden teal color grading, 8k resolution, high texture, suggested text overlay, 7 stoic rules, and click generate. Here is the result. The thumbnail looks really good and you can already see that it incorporates all the best practices for a good thumbnail. The result just looks amazing. Now let me explain how I made a prompt that almost instantly gave me a really good looking thumbnail. The key is to keep it super specific without over explaining. That's the secret to creating good prompts for pixels. The way I did it here is by first giving the AI the overall scene, a split face portrait of a rugged father. Then I give specific explanations about the rest of the important details, like the emotion that the human looking side has. I also mentioned that the marble side has to look like Marcus Aurelius and provide a short explanation of the background. Finally, I add the important keywords like 8k resolution, high texture. If you're struggling with prompting, here's what I'd recommend. Copy my prompt structure, paste it into ChatGPT, and ask it to create a thumbnail prompt for whatever your concept is, it'll give you something solid that you can use right away without spending time figuring it out yourself. Another option is to use this little microphone button and just talk in whatever you imagine your thumbnail to be. Once you've done that, you can click the enhance prompt button and it'll give you a pretty solid prompt. Now, to be completely honest, I don't personally use this feature that often because I already know how to prompt. It feels more natural for me to just write it out the way I know it works. But if you're just getting started, this is a really helpful feature to have. One of the most important things I've learned from working with Pixel is to never stick with the first thumbnail it gives you. Remember, the AI tool isn't there to take over and do everything for you. You're always working with the AI, operating it and guiding it toward what you actually want. And this is exactly why I absolutely love the editing feature. It allows me to write smaller, specific prompts to tweak exactly what I want changed or sometimes longer prompts if I want something to be clearly different. For this example, it already gave me a pretty good result. And you can see in the top left corner, there's a score for your thumbnail. This is super useful for knowing if you're on the right track or not. I rely on this a lot when I'm iterating on concepts. There's also one feature connected to this score that can completely transform a bad thumbnail with just one click, but I'll cover that in just a bit. For now, if you click the editing button right next to the redo button, which you'd use if you want to fully regenerate your thumbnail from scratch, you'll see this prompting field appear. Here you can describe exactly what you want, changed in the simplest, most concise language possible. For this thumbnail, I wanted a few things. I want the line in between the human and the marble statue to be more natural. I also want to change the font of the text and change the color to gold. Here's the new result. Now we have a thumbnail that looks 10 times better. These are the kinds of micro adjustments that can make the difference between someone scrolling past and someone clicking. Now finally, the feature that I use really often is the persona. Now you might ask, what's a persona? It's basically a model that's trained on your face, so pixels can add you into thumbnails or replace other faces with yours. To set one up, find personas under account on the sidebar. Click create, write your name or whatever you want to call your persona, and then upload at least 10 images, though I always recommend going for around 20 because the more images you provide, the better the results will be. Once you're done, click generate, wait a moment, and it'll show up here. So let's try a prompt with it. I'll use this prompt right here. You can pause and read it if you want. And as you can see, this is clearly me holding a pizza slice on the moon. Now here's something really cool. You're not limited to just yourself. You can create personas for other people too. So if you're making a video about, say, Mr. Beast, adding him to your thumbnail can massively increase the clickability of your video. This is a strategy I see a lot of top creators use, and it's nice that Pixels makes it this easy. And then there is the recreate feature that allows you to create actual thumbnails instead of just concepts, because you're building on top of proven working thumbnails from YouTube. Now, some of you might think this means we're just stealing someone else's content, but trust me, Pixels allows for so much editing that if you do this correctly, your final thumbnails won't look remotely close to the originals. You're taking a proven concept and making it entirely your own. So if you jump over to recreate, at the top, you have the option to upload a link. This is 
is the method I use most of the time, but you can also upload an image if you already have one saved. Below that, you have the option to select a persona or a style. Let's first jump into style. A lot of YouTube channels out there have thumbnails that are fitted to their branding. Think of channels like Fern, Mr. Beast, Alex Hormozzi. They all have thumbnails designed in a way that represents them visually. With this feature, you can actually train a model to create thumbnails that match your style or someone else's. The best example of this is a channel like Fern. You've probably seen their thumbnails before. They have a very distinct, recognizable look. To create a style, click on styles and then create. You'll be prompted to either write a channel name or upload images. I usually just write the channel name. Once it finds the channel, you can select the thumbnails that best represent their branding and style. After that, click continue and it will start training a model based on that style. Once it's trained, you can select it from here. I'm going to go with Fern since that's honestly one of the coolest styles to test with. For the reference thumbnail, I'm going to use this one from Marcus Brownlee, a really well-known tech reviewer who has his thumbnail game at the absolute top level. And this is what I love about this feature. You can take inspiration from the best in the game and adapt it to your own channel. In this thumbnail, he's reviewing the Nintendo Switch, but I don't want anything to do with Nintendo. I just want the concept. Someone stretching their hand close to the camera with themselves blurred in the background. This is a really popular format that's proven to work. So in the editing field, I'm going to write, change the Nintendo Switch to a banana with a Google logo on it. This is for a video about Nano Banana. Once I've written that out, I click generate and just check out this result. It looks exactly like Fern's thumbnails. It incorporated my edits perfectly. The background is fitted to how Fern usually does it. Dark background with the key figure framed in the center. It's a really powerful way to match your concept to any visual style you want. But you can also use the persona feature here too, as you probably noticed. For this next example, I'm going to use this thumbnail from Coffeezilla. I'll select myself as the persona, and this is where you can really take this tool to town. I'm going to write, replace the vault with a closed door. Instead of money and flames, just have a golden key. Increase the facial intensity, wider eyes, and stronger brow. Add subtle rim lighting, darken the vignette, keep the focus on the face and the key. Then I click generate and just check out this result. It keeps the same concept, someone looking intense, holding something in their hand with something in the background while the person is centered. But the overall thumbnail is fully changed. It's now perfect for a video that's going to reveal something and that's going to spark massive curiosity about what you're unlocking with this key. I love this feature because it allows me to transform any thumbnail I find on YouTube. And what I usually do is look at the thumbnails on videos with the most views. That way, I know the concept is proven to perform and I can adapt it for my own channel. Now it's time to come back to the feature I mentioned earlier, since for you, it's going to be the most powerful one, the number in the top left corner of every thumbnail we've made. This number is the overall rating of your thumbnail. If you mostly receive scores over 80, which means the thumbnail is going to perform well. But let me show you what happens when you generate something that's not as strong. With this prompt, I generated this thumbnail. The result is okay, but it's not optimized and the score shows that. If we click on the score, which is 48, we see 5 out of 10 for virality, 4 for idea, and 2 for curiosity. You get a pretty deep analysis of your thumbnail and why it's predicted to underperform. This kind of feedback is incredibly valuable because it takes the guesswork out of whether a thumbnail will work or not. Now, what I love the most about this feature and what I use the most when I occasionally get a bad thumbnail is this button right here. It's the one-click fix. It's going to fix your thumbnail and fully transform it into something that keeps the idea but works a lot better with just one click. Let's click it and here's the new result. Honestly, this looks like a super professional thumbnail. It fully transformed it while still keeping the core idea of learning how to focus. And of course, you can take this thumbnail further with the editing feature to improve on it however you want. But this is already a way better result. I mean, just take a look at it yourself. The reason the analyze feature works so well is because the model is actually trained on a massive amount of viral thumbnails, which makes it a lot easier to trust its recommendations. Now, one of the other really cool ways you can use this is to test your existing thumbnails. If you go to the analyze feature at the bottom, you can upload or link your own videos and check out the analysis on them. By simply uploading a thumbnail or pasting a link to your video, you can get a full breakdown of what's working and what's not, and then create a new version that performs better. In my opinion, this is one of the most powerful tools for people who are eager to improve the performance of their older videos. It gives you a clear path to optimization instead of just guessing. Finally, let's go into the title feature. I'm going to be honest, this is not the feature I use that often. I personally love creating my own titles, but I still want to show you this because it's a really powerful feature, especially if you're newer to YouTube and not as familiar with what makes a good title. Let's say I'm making a video about reviewing the Google Pixel phone, which is a surprisingly similar name to the tool we're reviewing today, and I want to help viewers decide whether or not this phone is actually worth buying. Here are some examples it generates. These are honestly pretty good titles right out of the gate. You can use them directly to create thumbnails, but you can also refine them using either the brainstorm or the more feature. Brainstorm will list out a big list of different keywords. When you 
you click one, it generates a title fitted to that keyword. So if I click on SEO, it gives me this title, which includes a lot of words people often search for, like the phone name, review, the year, complete buying guide, and worth it. This one is actually really solid for search optimization. Next, you can choose emphasize, which makes your title more bold and attention grabbing. You can also change how the title is worded or how long it is by clicking more. For example, if you think a title is too long, just click shorten and it'll give you a shorter version. You can honestly play around with this a lot. In my opinion, all of those titles are pretty good and you can create some impressive ones, especially if you're not that experienced with title creation yet. So now you know all the features I use the most and you have everything you need to know about how to use this tool properly. But most importantly, you now have all the information to decide whether or not Pixels is actually worth your money. And in my opinion, the answer is pretty easy because Pixels isn't just another generic AI image generator. It's a tool specifically trained on the best performing thumbnails on YouTube. Think about what that actually means for you. You can brainstorm concepts and instantly see whether your thumbnail idea has potential before you even create it. You can take thumbnails that are already proven to perform, videos with millions of views, and recreate them to fit your own content. That means you never have to wonder again if your thumbnail will work because the concept is already validated by real viewers on YouTube. And even after you create something, the analyze feature tells you exactly how your thumbnail will perform before you post it. If you're off track, it helps you fix it with one click. You're essentially removing all the guesswork from thumbnail creation. So if you want to start creating thumbnails that actually perform and are backed by data instead, then go ahead and sign up to Pixels using my link down in the description. You'll get a seven day free trial. So not only to test everything out, but you can already start producing viral ready thumbnails and boost your channel's performance. I'll see you guys in the next one.